Merry Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Candlelight Spectacular. We're going to have a great time as we celebrate together. And opening our time together is a four-time Juno winner. He's received the Order of Canada and numerous other accolades. He's made an impact that crosses generations and continues to grow to this day, making the first of two appearances here on The Spectacular, Fred Penner. I have a song that I want to share with you, but before I do, I want to wish everybody at Byron Community Church a very Merry Christmas. And a special hello to Indigo. This is a song that I wrote for a Christmas album I did many years ago, and it sort of sums up how I feel about this time of year. This is the season for family and friends so open up your heart and feel the wonder start look all around you there's so much to see and this is what the season means to me it's a thought it's a feeling it's the music we hear it's the smiles on the faces at this time of the year it's the words that are spoken with the hope and the joy it's the love reaching out to each girl and boy we are the eyes and ears we are the voice we take in all we see and hear and begin to rejoice we celebrate the giving of this light to the world celebrate the giving of this light to the world it's the lost it's the lonely, it's the pain that we see It's the tears in the darkness Wishing what may never be It's the hand reaching out With the gift from inside A gift plain and simple Given with pride we are the eyes and ears we are the voice we take in all we see and hear and begin to rejoice we celebrate the giving of this light to the world celebrate the giving of this light to the world <clears throat> The path is never-ending It will circle round and round Always search for an answer Until your strength is found And each time your name is spoken May you stop and hear the call Of the season As it brings the spirit closer To us all we are the eyes and ears we are the voice we take in all we see and hear and begin to rejoice we celebrate the giving of this light to the world celebrate the giving of this light to the world we are the eyes and ears we are the voice we take in all we see and hear and begin to rejoice we celebrate the giving of this light to the world celebrate the giving of this light to the world
Thanks again, folks. It was a pleasure to be here with you. Once again, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and peace to all. I love Christmas. The lights, the trees, the presents. I especially love all the treats. Candy canes are my favorite. Mine too. Not only are they a tasty treat, but they can help remind us of the real reason for Christmas. Yeah. See, when we look at a candy cane, it can look like a J. That can remind us about Jesus. It's his birthday we're celebrating after all. The white part of the candy cane can remind us that Jesus was pure. He never did anything wrong because Jesus was God. And the red can remind us that when he became an adult, he shed his blood for us on the cross so that our sins, all that bad stuff we do, could be forgiven. It's pretty cool that Jesus loves us that much. So let's have lots of fun this Christmas with all the lights and trees. And presents. But whenever we see a candy cane, let's take a minute and remember what it is we are celebrating. We're going to use a candy cane to make a very special Christmas mouse. You'll find everything you need in your activity bags. Or, if you don't have one of those, you can find the instructions on the church website. While we make our candy cane Christmas mouse, let's have some music. Hi, my name is Eric Frappen, and thank you so much for inviting me into your homes. I'd like to wish the Byron Community Church a very Merry Merry Christmas this year. Now, I heard that uh, you guys were doing a Christmas craft, and it was a Christmas mouse craft. I just happened to have a song about a Christmas mouse, and I would love to sing it for you right now. One early Christmas Eve before Santa came, a mouse stuck out of his little hole and licked the candy cane. Before he could escape, he heard the sound of little hoops with Santa's little reindeer prancing on the roof. Down the chimney Santa came and stood before the mouse and asked him if he was the owner of the house. The mouse was very pleased and held himself a call, said, I am the little mouse who lives inside the wall. And I scurried round by night, looking for a bite. A little scrap of food to take home to my wife Who lives with me inside the wall with my children all Oh, I am the little mouse who lives inside the wall Well, Santa laughed so hard and a tear fell from his eye To see a mouse so proud and not the least bit shy He said, I can't recall meeting one so brave and small as a little mouse who lives inside the wall. Santa wiped a joyful tear from his twinkling eye. And Santa asked the mouse with what he could supply. A fire truck, a tricycle, or a big red ball. Oh, anything at all for the mouse inside the wall. Oh, it would be so nice if I could have a slice. A little piece of pie to take them to my wife. Lives with me inside the wall with my children all, said the little mouse who lives inside the wall. Well, Santa reached inside the pot, but oh, the pie so small that it would even fit within the mouse's tiny paw. And every time you took a bite, it came back to its all and gave it to the little mouse who lives inside the wall. Santa quickly filled the stockings hanging in a row And with the Merry Christmas up the chimney he did go The mouse then sang a song as he ran off down the hall Sang, I am the little mouse who lives inside the wall And I scurry round by night looking for a bite A little scrap of food to take home to my wife Who lives with me inside the wall with my children all Oh, I am the little mouse who lives inside the wall? Oh, I am the little mouse who lives inside the wall. <laughs> That's my song about the little mouse who lives inside the wall, the Christmas mouse. And here he is right here with his good friend Carmen. So I would like I would like to thank Joshua Kennedy for getting in touch with me and inviting me to come into your homes today. Uh, I'm going to end off with this little song here, uh, and uh, 
I'm going to put use some special effects. I thought I'm going to use some special effects for this. Here we go. There we go. Once again, thank you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's been lots of fun to be here. It's been lots of fun to be here. It's been lots of fun to be here. But now I must go. Good tidings to you wherever you are. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Have a very Merry Christmas and all the best of the New Year to you. My name is Eric Traplin. It has been a pleasure playing for you here today. Bye-bye now. Fred Penner here. It's a pleasure to be with you for this time. Uh, it's a little bit different kind of celebration. And for this holiday, for this Christmas, I know we are going through a very challenging time with this COVID, but at least we have this opportunity to share songs together, to share a feeling together. And here's a song to celebrate this time of the year. It's called Children Go. And if you know it, well, please join in. I'll show you all the parts that'll come along. <clears throat> Clear your throats. <clears throat> you got it. Children go where I send thee how shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send thee one by one, one for the little bitty baby who was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send thee two by two, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby who was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? Well, I'm going to send thee three by three, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little baby, baby who was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send thee four by four, four for the four who stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby who was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? Well, I'm gonna send thee five by five, five for the five who got out alive, four for the four who stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby who was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? Well, I'm going to send thee six by six. I'm going to send thee seven by seven. I'm going to send thee eight by eight. I'm going to send thee nine by nine. I'm going to send thee ten by ten. Ten for the Ten Commandments. Nine for the nine all dressed so fine. Eight for the eight that stood at the gate. Seven for the seven that went to heaven. Six for the six that never got fixed. Five for the five who got out alive, four for the four who stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby who was born, born, born in Bethlehem, who was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Great. Thank you for sharing with that. I'd like to end off with a song that is perfectly fitting for what we are all going through right now. This is the last song that I sang on every Fred Penner's Place episode. You remember Fred Penner's Place, that guy who crawled through the log? That was me. This is the most important song I'm going to share with you, you know, especially during this COVID time. Take this song to heart. 
take good care of each other that's what friends like to do let your sister and brother help you learn that it's true we all need to feel wanted for the people who we are after me sing take good care take good care take good care take good care of each other thanks very much everybody have a wonderful safe and happy holiday season and i hope to see you again in person one of these days take care bye good morning byron community church happy advent sunday let me start by first introducing myself to you my name is mark osborne I had the wonderful privilege and honor of playing over 14 years in the National Hockey League, skated in over a thousand games, scored over 500 points, and I know your church is located in London, Ontario, smack dab in the middle between two bitter original six rivals, the Red Wings and the Maple Leafs. Well, my career saw me play on both teams. In the summer of 1980, I was the second pick of the Red Wings. I went on my rookie season to lead the team in scoring. Like most NHL players, rarely will you spend your entire career with one team. In the summer of 1983, after the Red Wings picked Steve Eiserman as their first pick, I got traded to another original six team in a multiplayer deal, the New York Rangers. I went on to play five seasons in New York capped off by a memorable 1986 Stanley Cup run, only to fall short, losing in the semifinals to a then hotshot rookie named Patrick Waugh. Yes, the dreaded Habs would go on to win another Stanley Cup. In the fall of 1986, I found myself off to a wonderful start, perhaps my career best. Ten goals in my first 18 games, only to be met with tragedy. Got the worst phone call of my life, getting ready to play the New, York, New Jersey Devils. I got news that my father had passed away, 48 years old, tragic. Shook me up, my family. You're never ready to experience death, certainly not to a close family member. Came back to the funeral, went on a prolonged slump. I just didn't feel very good and it was heartbreaking knowing that my mom was by herself. Phil Esposito, our coach and general manager, though, did me a favor. In the spring of 1987, he traded me to the Toronto Maple Leafs, a city where I was born and raised. I got to put on the blue and white. What a dream come true. Spent over six years here, capped off by wonderful runs of the Stanley Cup in 93 and 94. Coached by Pat Burns, we had Dougie Gilmore, Wendell Clark, Felix Potvin, Dave Anderchuk, and yet we fell short. Had it not been perhaps for a Wayne Gretzky high stick on Dougie Gilmore in Game 6 versus Los Angeles, we may have made that dream come true and play the Montreal Canadiens in the final. But that's all water under the bridge. I don't know where this season finds you. Certainly during this pandemic, it's been a very difficult time. Maybe you've been dealing with some bad news and found things are tough. But let me just read a little uh, favorite Bible verse of mine that talks about Christmas, that speaks about this good news that we're talking about. In the book of Luke, the second chapter, the story of the angels and the shepherds. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And uh, I look back on that verse, and I think back to the fall of 1975 when I was a kid, and reality struck for me where I made Jesus my Savior. I walked down the aisle of my local church and invited him to come into my heart. My life has never been the same ever since. And I just uh, want to wish you a Merry Christmas this Advent season. 
Consider the claims of Jesus. He truly is good news. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, hello to you all. Thank you for tuning in now. At this particular wrinkle in time, I have a very special, yet very ordinary man for you to meet. His name is Rick O'Shea, a middle management executive. Rick is a loyal, hard-working company man. He's a good provider, would do almost anything for his family, and loves his wife. Rick has always believed that what goes around comes around. Therefore, it stands to reason that if you work hard, keep your nose clean, then you will reap the benefits. Tonight, this belief will be put to the test as Rick encounters the unexpected. Okay. Well, the rest of the work is just going to have to wait till after Christmas. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Okay. Keys, check. Coat, check. And backpack, no. That's staying. Okay, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh. Mary's list. Got it. I should just have enough time to head off to the mall and pick up some last minute gifts. Speaking of gifts, I wonder where my bonus check is staying. They usually give it to us before Christmas so that we can go to the mall and spend it. Oh well, I guess I'll get it after Christmas. Then I can pay, use it to pay the bills. You know, it should be a good size, good size check, actually. The company's doing well. My division exceeded its goals. Oh wait, this must be it. I guess someone just dropped it at my door rather than coming in to, to bother me. Gee, I wonder what size check it is. Hopefully, we'll be able to buy that snowmobile that Marianna, Mary and I were looking at. Are you kidding me? Is this some kind of joke? It must be. Okay, Fred, you've had your fun. Come on out. Okay, you can come out now, Freddy. There's nobody there. He's not coming. Terminated. Effective immediately. Why? What did I do wrong? Regretfully, your services are no longer required. Regretfully. Like, really? You picked this time, Christmas Eve, to tell me this. And yet, you don't even come and tell me to my face. You just slip it under my door. Oh, you are a class act. Oh. I hope your company crashes and burns. Oh, Christmas Eve. And you tell me there's no room for me. What am I going to tell Mary? Christmas was pretty different for Rick and his family what with the unexpected turn of events on Christmas Eve. Celebrations were pretty subdued, and there was a heavy cloud that hung over the sparse gatherings around the O'Shea Christmas table, which was historically filled with craziness and ruckus laughter. In the Rick O'Shea household, there was none of that this Christmas. So, here we are a few weeks later. Rick has gotten over the initial shock. He has returned to the office and cleaned out his desk, and has been given a severance check that was anything but generous. At 62 years old, he has begun to look for work. Rick has settled into an uncomfortable routine of writing a letter of application and being rejected. Writing a letter. Being rejected. Writing. Rejected. Too old is the implied but never spoken reason. Despondency has become Rick's constant companion. Rick's life is about to change again with a phone call as he encounters the unexpected. Hey, Dad! How's it going? Oh, well, I'm still breathing. Uh, I'm still living on this side of the sod. But I have no idea what life has in store for me. Oh, Dad, relax. Something will come along. Oh, really? 
do you have a crystal ball? Because I've got a mitt full of rejection letters that say otherwise. Whoa, Dad, chill. I didn't mean anything by that. I, I guess I was just trying to encourage you. Sorry. I guess I didn't realize how difficult this has been for you. It's just you've always been my rock. My super strong and crazy dad. Wow, this has really done a number on you, eh? Yeah, it sure has, Peanut. Dad, I'm 40 years old and a whole lot bigger than a peanut. Yeah, I know, but you know what? You'll always be my little girl. You'll always be my peanut. <clears throat> wow. Um, listen, uh, how, how's everybody over there? How's, uh, how's my wonderful little granddaughter, Charity? Everyone's good here, Dad. Oh, good. Actually, I'm calling because I have some news. Good news. Oh, really? So, you've won five million dollars and you want to share it with me. How thoughtful. <laughs> hey, Dad, it's nothing like that. We're pregnant! What? How could you? I mean, uh, uh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, so when do you do? I know, eh? We were pretty surprised ourselves. It was a bit of a shock for us initially, but now we're excited. It'll be good for Charity to have a younger sibling. We figured I'm due somewhere around September or October. Huh. Ain't that something. Hey, Dad, I just heard a crash. I gotta go. I have to make sure Charity's okay. I gotta go. Sorry. Toodles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go. Oh, what were they thinking? A baby? Another mouth to feed? They can hardly pay their bills now. How in the world are they going to afford this? Oh, fate has dealt them a nasty, cruel joke. God only knows how they're going to manage. God only knows, all right. It's been a year since we last looked in on Ricochet. A lot can happen in a 12-month period. Babies can arrive... Wounds can be healed, careers can come and go, and sometimes good things in life can come unexpected. George? Is that you? Are you trying to blow my cover? Look, I've been <clears throat> just about got caught a couple of minutes ago. But I managed to sneak away from them. They've been looking for me for the last 10 minutes. Who? Oh, my granddaughter and her little friend. They're having a play date. We're playing hide and seek. It's a riot. Yeah. Hey, George, I gotta tell you, that advice that you gave me to take an early retirement, that was golden, man. Oh, I know, we're gonna miss some, some trips that we wanted to take and yeah, we'll probably end up driving the car for a little bit longer. But you know what? The time I'm spending here with my grandkids, it is so worth it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I... I, I missed out on this with my own kids because I was working. Yeah, but... I am so glad to be spending this with my grandkids, watching them grow up. And... I get to spend time with friends like you. Yeah. Uh, what, what's that? Oh, coffee on Wednesday? Absolutely. Timmy's? 10 a.m. Got it. All right. You know, it's a crazy thing to say, but getting terminated last Christmas was the best Christmas present ever. Now, where are those little rugrats? Have you ever felt like the man in the monologue? Like Ricochet? Bounced around by life's unexpected surprises. Oh, I know that there are different kinds of surprises, varying angles to uh, unexpected circumstances that uh, deflect our way, catching us off guard. Life's unexpected ricochets. There are unexpected, unpredicted situations that are pleasant and that make us happy. 
like a surprise party in your honor, like your favorite team, a miraculous comeback where they win the game. And I know this really doesn't apply to those of us who are Maple Leaf fans. Maybe it's winning the dream lottery against incredible odds. Or boys and girls, it's getting selected for that special award at school. You didn't expect it. Or how about a Christmas present that is way beyond your wildest wishes, totally unexpected? Now, in today's service, we've uh, enjoyed a great talk by hockey hero Mark Osborne. We have uh, enjoyed family-focused uh, presentations by Fred Penner and Eric Traplin, and uh, we've uh, taken that all in. But when I think of a family focus, I think of one of our favorite family-friendly authors. Dr. Seuss. In one of his books, he simply put it this way, uh, hang-ups, bang-ups, and hang-ups can happen to you. Did you get that? Bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. Uh, there are unexpected surprises that aren't pleasant, but in fact are painful. Hey, did you feel Ricochet's pain? Imagine being terminated and right before Christmas. Oh, it's unexpected, just like some of your unexpected disruptions or upheavals. Or as Mark Osborne shared with us about that phone call regarding his, his father, um, there are bad bounces in, in, in life. There's uh, devastating news. Uh, there are tragic phone calls. There are life interruptions that really shake us, that, that rock our world. Uh, we know too well that life at times can be very difficult as we deal with some of these upheavals and disruptions. And not only that, it's not that we only ever have one upheaval at a time. Sometimes there's a cluster of calamities, not just being terminated from a job, but an unplanned pregnancy in the family. Ah, oh, it just uh, seems so overwhelming, so unfair, so unexpected. But I want to propose a possibility that goes beyond simply categorizing unexpected surprises as good or bad, or pleasant or painful. Let's bring God into the equation. Uh, with God, there are never times where he says, oops, I didn't see that coming into your life. No, in fact, uh, God has promised to give us a hope and a future. Uh, we are to trust God no matter what happens in life. And often God works in mysterious and unexpected ways. Uh, God has the ability to take what seems bad in your life and to bless you with his grace and his goodness. But there's a, an unexpected bonus it's found in this principle. With God, our unexpected blessings and opportunities often come at us initially as unexpected upheavals or disruptions. That bears repeating. Our unexpected blessings and opportunities often come at us initially as unexpected upheavals or disruptions. That's what happened that first Christmas. There was a young man named Joseph, and he received some news that rocked his world. It was shocking news. He learned that his fiance Mary was pregnant, and it wasn't his baby. 
For Joseph, there was only uh, one solution. That was to separate from Mary, but God intervened. And Joseph discovered that the baby in Mary's womb wasn't another man's child. It was the Son of God. God the Father had placed him there. And you know the rest of the story. Joseph married Mary. And Joseph would play a key role in the Christmas story. It was Joseph who named God's son Jesus. God the Son, our Lord Jesus, left the splendor of heaven and came to earth, unexpectedly born as a baby, a baby who would become a man who would show us how to live and who would die for us. And because he shared in her humanity, Jesus met the demanding qualification required to be our Savior and Lord. It truly was a rescue operation. Jesus came into this world to save us from our sins, to do something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. It was incredible, amazing, and unexpected. We have a family memory and I'm going to give you the very short version of it. One Christmas Eve, before we had uh, kids, my wife Heather and I were heading from Toronto to London for Christmas Eve. Our little Dodge Omni car broke down in Guelph. It was uh, an upheaval, and we received the devastating news that the car was done. It was finished. So there in that very dark place, we phoned London to say that we wouldn't be there Christmas Eve. But Heather's dad decided that he would leave the comforts of his home, that he would leave the joyous celebration going on. He would drive to Guelph and rescue us and take us back to London. And guess what? The next day, my dad, in wintry weather, drove from Toronto to London London back to Toronto so that Heather and I could enjoy Christmas celebrations with my side of the family. What a great story. Ah, some lessons that came out of that. Uh, don't buy a Dodge Omni. They don't make them anymore, so that's a good thing. And I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't a costly disruption. Uh, it was painful. But the good news are a couple of other lessons the love of our fathers who came to our rescue. It was the other lesson, this principle we talked about, how often unexpected blessings come at us initially as unexpected disruptions. I remember very little about that car, but I remember the acts of love and kindness from our dads who came to the rescue. It's why Ricochet was able to say, it may sound crazy, but being terminated last Christmas was maybe one of the best Christmas gifts of all. Sometimes what seems so bad can be turned into something so good. It's what Joseph experienced. It's what we hope and pray you'll experience this Christmas. It's been a dark year. A lot of upheaval, a lot of disruption. But our hope is that in the midst of the darkness of this year, Jesus, the light of the world, will encounter you in a very personal way. Wouldn't it be wonderful this Christmas if you have that unexpected experience of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ? Will you open your life to the one who is the Christ of Christmas? the one who is God's Son, the one who is the light of our world. Amen. Well, thanks, John. It was four weeks ago that we began our Advent journey. It's a way for us to pause and remember what it is we're really celebrating. We lit the candle of hope, peace, love, and joy, and today we'll light the center candle, the Christ candle. This is a way for us to remember that the Word became flesh, 
It's a way for us to celebrate the giving of the one true light to the world and remember the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. As we light our candles here, we invite you to light your own candles at home. We want to thank you for joining us, and to you and yours, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. To get in touch with us, you can do so through our church website, byroncommunitychurch.com. Thanks again for joining us. Christmas really is the most wonderful time of the year, because Christmas Day is the best day ever. Mm -hmm.